word of the Lord to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, mm -hmm. and verse 15. And then we're going to read also from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 30. Hebrews 12 and 15, and then we will go to Ephesians 4 and 30. The word of the Lord reads in Hebrews 12 and 15. Looking diligently, lest any, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring it up, trouble you, and thereby may be the fire. We go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, and you will notice verse 30. Paul said here, and read not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now notice what he said in verse 31. Let all bitterness, come on, repeat that. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, and he will speak to be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tender hearted. Given one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. In verse 31, it said, Let all bitterness, and then it names some other things that are really attached to bitterness. He said, Be put away from you with all malice. The writer of uh, Hebrews told us, Look at diligent. Lest any man fail the grace of God. And look what he said. Lest any root of bitterness spring it up, trouble you, and thereby may it be the fire. I want to talk about a root today. And my subject is the root of bitterness. I'm going to repeat that subject the root of bitterness. What does it mean to be bitter? If you were to find the word bitterness, the Bible said it is anger, it is disappointment, and brother, it is, it is a disappointment at being treated unfairly. It is resentment. And I do believe that even today, in this sanctuary, because God gave this word for me to give you today, I believe that there are some individuals in here that are, are troubled. And you are experiencing anger. Amen. You are disappointed because you were, or you at least thought you were, treated unfairly. And because you thought you were treated unfairly, there is some resentment on your part. Can you say amen? amen. Hebrews 12 and 15 is teaching us that believers, do I have any believers here today? Amen. Believers must look diligently, that means closely. You must look diligently after yourself. Amen. That uh, you don't fall short of God's grace. God's grace is His favor. How I many y'all need the favor of the Lord? Amen. You don't want to fall short of receiving His favor. Because if we don't, the writer lets us know a root. Of bitterness will spring up to cause trouble. And that trouble is for you, that trouble is for others. And the writer said, Many have become the foul diet. Listen, you got to watch when you become angry. The scripture tells us to be ye angry and sin not. Yeah. Now, anger is one of the human emotions. And so if I were to ask, has anybody in here been angry for all of our hands? All of the world. Come on, y'all. I'm a retired school teacher. And there were many days that I was angry. Amen. The of situations in that room. Y'all come on now. I'm so glad for the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I learned that I need to pray even more. And listen, at the beginning of each school year, I 
would take time to pray. I would pray at home. When I got to school, I had to have all them boring meetings that go through until the beginning of the year. I would take time in my classroom to pray. I took some orders to y'all. Mm -hmm. Anointed every desk. Oh, yes. Every wall, door. I asked for God's blessing in the classroom. And asked God to help me. Because if you put in the position as a teacher, and you have to break up fights sometimes, like I did one time. And when I pulled the boy back out the fight, and pulled it out the way, the lick, the other boy was swinging and caught me in my mouth. I was angry. <laughs>
goodness of things that happened to her before she found out that the Lord Jesus was to be born through her. Yeah. Then all the things she went through, the embarrassment she had to tell folks that this child is not really Joseph's child, but it's the work of the Holy Ghost. And folks, no doubt, did not believe her. Can you imagine the shame? Can you imagine how this girl felt? She could have been bitter. Somebody say bitter. Come on and again say bitter. This bitterness is dangerous. Because according to one author, when you examine the various shades of the meaning of the word bitterness, it is obvious that bitterness, listen to this, and rebellion have the same root. It is commonly said that if you stay rebellious, you will become bitter. Yes. And if you stay bitter, you will become rebellious. Amen. Some of y'all not really paying attention because I told you there's some anger in here now. Yes. And if the anger is not dealt with, a root of bitterness will develop. Yes. And if there's a root of bitterness that is there, the devil will work with that root. To cause you to become even rebellious. Why don't you lift your hand and tell God thank you? Come on, everybody, tell God thank you. Yes, bitterness is connected to rejection. When one has been rejected, they often rebel, as I've been stated. And rejection hurts so badly to many people become folks that resent life. You know, I, I preached about Solomon not long ago, and I happen the way I am. And you know, he said that life was all vain. That is your vanity. He said life was worthless. Solomon had become bitter. He was bitter against life. I want to tell you that when you become bitter against life, y'all listen to me, because I've been sensing some things. And, and, and that's the thing that the Lord has been showing me uh, in the spirit. If you notice, know, I keep praying, Lord, heal our minds. Lord, heal our emotions. And as I pray that prayer in my house almost every day, praying in the 9 o'clock prayer on Sunday morning, the 5.30 prayer through the evening, the Lord also gave it to me to rebuke a spirit of suicide. Because along with bitterness that would make you resent even life and declare as Solomon that everything is vain and you just hate life, the devil would take just go on the end. Just go on and take your life. It's not worth living. Come on, y'all. Hear me now. I know I didn't know tune of you. Everything. I, I, I'll take what God has given me. And parents... Y'all listen to me. Grandparents, we need to pay attention to our children. Amen. We need to know what they're going through. The mood swings. Uh, the different attitudes. And not just be so quick to dismiss it. But take a closer look and bind that devil. Because yes. if you didn't know it, the suicide rate has grown tremendously among our people. It is grown among black people like never before. And then Hollywood and the stuff that's in the songs and in the music, it is not helping anything because in the songs and many things are te they're teaching our children to take their own life. You got reports now of six year olds and eight year olds who are thinking about killing themselves. Are y'all still here? Why don't you say amen? amen? The devil wants you to be rebellious. Yes. Come on, y'all. I say the devil wants you to be rebellious. Amen. See, if you, if you are disobedient and rebellious, in most cases you're going to be rebellious against God and His Word, and then your life is open up for destruction. Look at what Isaiah 1 and 19 said. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the man. Yes. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the soul, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen. Why not be 
be willing and obedient to eat the good of the land. When you're talking about eating the good of the land, you're talking about enjoying the blessings of the, of the Lord. How many of y'all know you need God's blessing? I said, how many of you know you need God's blessing? When you want God's blessing, then be obedient. Hallelujah. You can, yes, you can eat the good of the land. You can enjoy the promised land. Y'all remember, remember when they got to the promised land and they said, they told Moses, surely it's a land that flowed with milk and honey. God had promised to give them cities that they had not built. Promised to give them houses full of good things they had not filled. Well, they had not did. Now I want you to know, those blessings are still for God's people today. Y'all clap your hand and praise it. Come on, come on, praise it. Come on and praise it. Because some of y'all living in houses, you know you should be. Some of you got jobs, you know you should not have had. It is the Lord's goodness. Somebody shout hallelujah. doing that 
attack. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so behavior was, was pretty good on that. Oh, when I went to lose weight. That was in a different world. And because there was some bitterness. Let me tell you something. You see, if the parents are bitter, are bitter guess what look? It's spread down to the children. I was kind of quiet and reserved fellow. When I went to school, there was some of the guys who didn't like me. Hard to lose my fault. Because I'm on the playground and they were roughing up a boy, beating him up. And I was a snitch. And didn't know that snitches end up in ditches. I learned though. I got ready to walk home that evening. Old gang was waiting on me. Old gang was waiting on me. And I thank God many of the, the, the older members here remember missionary plays. Her children were going to school there. And her, her son. And her daughter, they came to my defense. Said, don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. He didn't know the way he did. He knew. He just come to school, y'all. <laughs> and they laid the bag that fell off. I laid it home. But I learned that this was no more. <laughs> but here's the thing. Because both of my parents were school teachers, the perception, and you have to understand, sometimes perception causes problems. The perception was that we were rich and we were not. School teachers were not rich, y'all. But there was a perception. And because no doubt their parents had been taught, that same spirit was in those shoes. And there was some issues I had to face because of bitterness. And what I'm saying to you, if you are bitter, you don't know how many individuals you have harmed. Yes. Who you have hurt. Yes, yes. Come on, y'all. And so this message has come. And, 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 and I, I want y'all to help me now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to preach it. And I'm, I'm going to cut it because, you know, some of y'all ain't with this, but I'm giving you what God gave me now. Yeah, go ahead. This message has called us to examine ourselves. Yeah. Lord. Do I have a root of bitterness in me? Lord, how am I treating the folks that are around me? Lord, do I really have love in my heart? Why don't you lift your hands and say, Lord, help me? I think we can do better. Come on, say, Lord, help me. Yes, bitterness is hurting people. I told you it causes resentment. It causes anger for no reason. It causes hatred, yes. spite. It will cause you to be mean. Mm -hmm. It will cause you to mistreat the people around you. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Come on and say amen again. Amen. And can I say something to my young people? I know we got some little, little, little babies that are here, but some of these folks old enough to understand what I want to say to them right quick. Don't grow up and be bitter because of what you don't have presently. First of all, we tell you here to be thankful. Yes, right. Pass y'all here. Amen. You need to thank God for what you have. Amen. Amen. Because what you have, there are other folks that would like to have what you have right now. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So be thankful for what you have. And then make it up in your mind, I'm going to make something out of my life. God has given you a golden opportunity. Get your education. Parents, y'all have it. Come on, say amen. amen. I want to tell every black child in here today, you are just as intelligent as anybody else. Black children are smart you. Intelligent you. Come on, y'all. You don't have to fear. Amen. Get, get into those books. And let the Lord make something out of you. Y'all want to clap your head and praise God. Come on, God. But I hope you, you can become bitter because of your surroundings. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, that the Egyptians made the lives of the Israelites bitter through hard bondage. Some of you young folk right here talking about they want to 
working me like a Hebrew slave. You don't know what I work the Hebrew slave did. They had to make, they were out in the desert, out there, degrees, 110 degrees, 115 degrees, out there they had to make bricks. And Pharaoh got mad with them and tell them I ain't going to give them any straw to make the bricks. Well, they got those fine old straw and still make the same number of bricks. They were slaves. Yeah. And y'all got the audacity to talk about somebody working you like a Hebrew slave. Y'all talk about y'all up here that got the cologne and I check the cologne and I'm trying to help y'all to make it right. <laughs> Y'all say amen. amen. You want to say that, that the teacher working you there just because they made you do a little bad. Just because they made you read a book. You ought to read a book. Did you hear that? You ought to read a book. Y'all come on here. I got another message later on this month from Black History Month. This Black History Month. And in my, my preparation for the, the message, the guy said he did, a, he did some research. And in his research, 80% of his students, this 80% of the people who made D's and F for black children. Oh, wow. But when he questioned them to find out why, he would tell you they were intelligent children. You know what they said? They said, we don't ever read a book. We watch television all day. We play games. If you want to compete in this world, I'm still preaching now. If you want to make something, pick a book up. Read. Learn something. Y'all come on and say it, man. Find out whether Donald Trump tell a lie or not. Because Donald Trump tell y'all that we got fake news. And guess what? I got some books at home that prove that some of what he said is true. Uh-huh. Some of it is fake news. And then he's still lying too. Oh, <laughs> Come on, y'all. But I'm talking about learning what's going on. Because let me tell y'all something. Now, I didn't mean to go here, and I don't mean to get into politics, but, but I'm going to tell y'all something. That neither the Democrats or the Republicans are too thrilled with. Uh oh. No, I didn't know I was going to say that. You better learn something for yourself. Come on and say amen. amen. Everybody say amen. amen. But listen, listen, I know, I, I got to close this now. I know that for some of we're working hard and it seems like you're not getting anywhere. I know that the salary that we, we have is not paying us enough. Somebody will say amen. amen. I know somebody need a raise in here. Amen. Oh, I know somebody will say amen. amen. I'm going to say, I know somebody need a raise in here. But the message is telling you, don't get bitter. And become resentful toward other people. Don't become resentful toward God. For I find that people now, amen, they even resent God and they blame God for all of their calamities. Somebody tell God, thank you. Come on and tell God, thank you. But the Bible teaches us that we need to learn how to be content with what we have. Yes. Paul said in 1 Timothy 6 and 6, God wants me to live. Yes. And along with living right, I am contented. In other words, I am satisfied. I'm satisfied with the blessing that God has already given me. Yes. Come on and tell me, thank you. Paul also said in Philippians 4 and 11, he said, not that I speak in respect of want. In other words, I will not ever really in need. He said, if I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there will to be content. In other words, Paul was saying, I have learned how to get along happily. I have learned whatever is going on in my life to be grateful and thankful and to be satisfied with what I have. When we become satisfied with the blessing of the Lord and thankful that God has let me live and be thankful I got a roof over my head. I know the roof might not be mine now. I'm paying the rent. But Lord, I thank you for the roof over my head. You gotta learn to be thankful for the food you got. Come on and tell it thank you. Come on.
And that husband decided, I'm going to move my wife and my two sons to Moria, 50 miles away from Bethlehem. Because of the famine in the land. But when they got to Moria, the husband died. Her two sons did get married, but both sons died. And in those days, women couldn't really take care of themselves. They needed a husband, a father, or a big brother to see about them. They hear the name on me. She had nobody, no male to take care of her. So when she go back home to Bethlehem, the Bible said the whole city was moved. When they saw Naomi, they said to one another, Is this Naomi? And Naomi told them, Don't call me Naomi anymore. Naomi means my pleasant one. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Mara means bitter. She was bitter about her losses. She was bitter about her husband dying. Sons died. Come on, they tell it. She told the fool, I went out full. I had some money when I left here, but I came back empty. I don't have anything, but thank God for a root. Not root, but root. Root was her daughter talk. And she told them, where you go, I'm going to go. But your people going to be my people. Y'all say amen. Amen. Hallelujah, God will be my God. Yes, yes. That just clung, just, just hung on oh, yes. to Naomi. And look at the story. Yeah. When it got back to Bethlehem, yeah. it was Ruth that said, Let me get up here and go clean the field. Mm -hmm. You see, in those days, the law was that rich people were not to get all the crops out of the field, leave something on the end so poor people could come here. Yeah. And you see, where, where uh, uh, Naomi had got older, the young woman had that cat food for a mother in law. But look what happened. She was gleaning food from the rich man in the town. And the man married Ruth. Oh, praise God. And when they had their first child, look at the story. They brought Naomi there to nurse the child. Thank you, Jesus. God will make a way for you. You don't have to be bitter. God will fix your situation. God will fix what's broken on the inside. God will heal the wound in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell God thank you.